Hello there, welcome to this video in which I'm hoping to make you a virtuoso. Quite a big claim, but I hope you're going to enjoy these technical exercises. I have written 10. Uh, there's a, uh, a picture on my um, Instagram page where you can see this. I'm going to begin with an introduction and a bit of a disclaimer. Although this video is about speed and playing quickly, that is not how I want you to play the piano. That's not the point. Uh, to be able to play quickly, you have to be able to play the same technique slowly. But there's an opposite which is true. If you can do something very, very quickly, then at least you know you can do it slowly. So there's two sides to this coin. Now, uh, these technical exercises require major scale mastery. Uh, and you're going to have to warm up before you do them because they're quite um, demanding. So what I've already done before this video is I've done my technical exercises, physically I mean, which I do every day anyway, so I'm sort of always kind of warmed up in a way, but I've prepared especially for this video. Uh, so I, uh, I always uh, do my sort of, first of all I make a, I squeeze my fists hard and then open out my fingers as far as they will go. I do that maybe two or three times. That kind of wakes them up a bit. And then I do uh, my palm slapping. I do about 100 of these, 150. I just do it about this fast until it starts aching. Uh, then I'll sort of ha have a rest, sort of shake my arms next to my body. And then I'll do the, uh, the kind of claw grip thing where I'm bending at these knuckles and the thumbs as well. Uh, that's not done with a tension. That's just done you know, like that, basically, without, I'm not doing it hard. Just gentle curling. And then I'll do about 100 or so of those, and then a little shake. And then I'll do uh, a normal fist opening and closing. Uh, then the shake. And then I will sort of put my fingertips together and push one of the hands, push the other hand, including thumbs. Maybe twice I'll do that. Another little squeeze, just to warm up the fist. That might take five minutes or so, and that's nice. Then I'll have a bit of a break, maybe a cup of tea, which I've uh, already had. So my hands are nice and warm. I also came to the piano and just did a bit of uh, sort of chromatic um, playing up and down just to sort of get the fingers on the piano a bit, played one or two little songs, and now I'm ready to do this video. So make sure that you do that. Make sure also that there's no energy puddles, so uh, you don't, you don't want to have anything lower uh, like at the joints. So your elbow is going to be a bit higher than your wrist, your wrist is going to be a little bit higher than your first knuckles. They are a little bit higher than the middle and a little bit higher than the fingertips. Even if it's just a little bit, there's just a gentle curve. Uh, water, power, it wants to follow the path of least resistance. So make sure that you're sitting high and far back for these. Sounds all very serious, but it is, because these are very challenging. So you're going to start doing them slowly. You're going to find your natural limit. And uh, so don't expect the speed to come immediately. It's just not going to happen. So the first one. Uh, well, of course, uh, likes, comments, subscriptions are welcome. And have a look at my video management website and water pianism syllabus. Um, the first one is chromatic pattern. And uh, again, you're going to start slowly, find your natural limit. 120 on the metronome is a good place to start. You're not going to always play metronomically. It's just to get you going. I guess an analogy is like a bullet in a barrel. Uh, the bullet requires the barrel to be there so it can exit in a straight line, let's say. And then it's free. And it's kind of what the metronome does. It guides you to a particular point until you don't need it anymore. So I'm not trying to say play metronomically. So the first one is both hands. Do as many of these eyes closed as you can. 120 on the metronome is a good place to start because it's two notes per second. You could also play three or four notes per second. And you're going to do a particular pattern on the chromatic scale. Some of these you may have seen, but there's two emphases, two emphases on, the, on this particular video. Endurance, which means you're going to do them for a long time. And two, you're really going to try and do them as fast as you can. So it's not just a technical exercise. You're aiming for precision, rapidity, endurance, much more different than just doing, doing an exercise. Uh, so chromatic pattern is to go, you start on C, both hands, and you're going to go over each sort of group of black and white notes twice. So instead of uh, just going up the chromatic scale, which is a bit boring, you're going to go up and then down and then up and over the next one, down and then up and over the next one and down. That's the sort of pattern. Let's, let's go up to that point there and come down again. Now what I'm doing is I'm playing it chromatically, of course, but I meant to say I'm playing it staccato. I'm not playing it legato. I'm playing it staccato. So there's a, there's a, there's a purposeful 
space between each pressing of a key and you of course want to do that as fast as you can so you, you'll warm up etc and then when you do it as fast as you can you'll kind of get something like There's no tension in my fingers. Natural fingering, natural fingering, nice and fluid, nice and easy. That's the first one. Second one, I've called glistening arpeggios. This is a very virtuosic, virtuosic thing to do. Um, and it's a very Listian thing as well. A lot of this is inspired by my uh, passion of Franz Liszt. Um, but again, you start slow, you choose a chord type. All of these are personalizable as well, of course. Uh, so I'll take maybe a, a whole diminished, it's quite a nice easy shape to play, but you can do any chord, even if you just do it with major and minor triads. Uh, but if you're, doing, if you're aiming for virtuosity, then I'd expect you to know at least a few more chords than major minor triads. Do a whole diminished, and uh, the idea is this, nice and slowly, you're not playing them together, and you can do that in other technical exercises, but this is, a, this is like a glistening rolling arpeggio, which goes up and down the piano, all the way, all the way up here, even all the way up here. So. You start, you're, you're transferring the arpeggio chord, you're transferring the chord from left to right and back again. As if there's not two hands playing. Notice it's staccato. Now, the actual, the whole thing together is that you're gonna move that up. So you go up, you come down, and you go up again, and then the left hand comes up and does what the right hand just did and you sort of move it all up an octave. And then on the way down, same thing, left hand finishes that, right hand plays it. Up again, Left right hand comes down, does what the left hand just did, left hand goes down an octave, and then you finish. So a bit faster. I'll do another one. So every note is clear and distinguish distinguishable. So doing it, I'm doing it without the pedal. So try and see if you can do that quite fast in one place. Eyes closed. You want to feel every finger touching every note. No tension again. I'm playing down like this. Now when you go up, you have to make that transition really smooth. So as the right hand is playing, the left hand is finished. So it's done it. It's done its job. Now the right hand is doing that arpeggio, or that broken chord part here. Your left hand has the time to come up and it should be waiting to take over from that chord. See, it takes over. That's the idea. And the opposite on the way down. Um, well, you don't need to go that far down, but you get the idea. The hand, when the left hand is finished, it can it can move up and be waiting while the right hand is finishing its job. Then it takes over, and then it can move up while the right hand is finishing its job. So. It sounds nice, but it's actually not that hard if you slow it down. Even if you do it at this speed, it actually sounds quite nice when you sort of hear yourself playing it. Go all the way down. Let's try it with a major 7 chord. Do it with a, I don't know, a 6th chord or a dominant 7 chord. And of course in any key, let's do it in the key of um, E. Maybe let's do E minor 7. So that's a really nice thing to be able to do. Uh, number three, accompanied chromatic. Now, what I meant by this is, your left hand is, is doing this. You're just playing one, five, an octave, which is a nice little workout for the left hand. It's a common technique, it's quite nice. First of all, get used to playing that in all 12 keys. You're gonna go up chromatically. I'll introduce the right hand in a moment. So just get used to doing this quite quickly. 
just to get that into your bones. Put the fifth in the middle. Okay, left hand is good. Of course you can do that in the right hand if you want to, but that isn't the technique. You can do it, of course, together. You know, you can personalize and do that as well. It's a nice one to do. But the point is that the right hand is going to play chromatically one octave. You're going to do this as quick as you can. But you have to do it in a, in a feeling of sixes. Otherwise, the pattern doesn't work. So it's a specific pattern that you really need to get used to feeling. So it's going to go like this. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. But the chord is coming on the four. So look, it's like this. It's that kind of thing, I think. No, it's even it's even slow. It's even quicker than that. I think. Is that, let me do it naturally. One, two, three. Oh, it's in fours. It's in fours. I don't know why I said six. That's it. So let me explain that again. No idea where the six came from. So fours. have to work out your natural fingering for that and then you, f you finish playing a major triad like that and then you go up to the next key and you're doing the chromatic scale from D flat and then D and then E flat etc that you know quickly you can do it over two octaves you can do it um, you can stay in one key for, for more than just one repetition well one isn't a repetition but you know what I mean instead of just doing it once do it ten times uh, so that's quite a nice one uh, so that's that's number three so number four uh, octave intervals this is a very challenging one um, you can do this first of all not as octaves you can do it with single fingers just to get used to the idea so the first thing is you're gonna play all intervals and you're going to play them, eventually you'll play them as octaves. So here, here's a second. This will be the minor, third, four, flat five, five, flat six, six, dominant seven, or flat seven, major seven. You, you're also actually going to do it on a, on a flat second, which will, will look like it's a chromatic scale. But it, you're sort of seeing it as a flat second as just another interval rather than it's a chromatic scale. So start with the fingers first, one finger on each hand. Just get used to it because there's different layers of doing this. So first of all, you'll do them together. Uh, of course you can go down as well just to get used to that sort of flat second idea and then move to the second and then I'll, I'll, I'll just do a couple let's jump to the fourth and of course they get more challenging as you open up that space because you, your eyes are going to want to jump backwards and forwards so let's do sixths that's already quite sort of hard to do and talk at the same time uh, okay so that and then so that's the idea you're going to get used to doing it with just one finger then bring in the octave so flat second now you can do these together you can do them where the left hand is first or you can do it where the right hand is first try all of them uh, you can of course do them separate as well together or one of the hands leads like left hand first or the right hand leads so it's your choice um, so that's that's basically what it is but you're going to do it with with different uh, intervals so um, try all the variations so let me do maybe minor thirds you can even open the octave and do it in that kind of way <laughs> that's kind of a fun thing to do let's do that in fourths um, as how can we do this one let's do it uh, let's just do it together as octaves let's do it down that's quite a nice one to do of course two octaves and again try and do it as fast as you can but you know start slowly of course just to get the feeling I understand that octaves are quite difficult 
I quite like to do that open ascending one. That's quite fun. So that's, that's number four, octave intervals. And I also put major scales because you can do it in the major scale as well. Same kind of logic. Um, you just play the octave. Let's do it in the key of E flat. That's the kind of, and you can do it again, open. Let's go to the key of, I don't know, G, but open. That kind of thing. That's quite a fun thing to do. That really gives you a nice, and octaves are really important when you're playing the piano because they appear everywhere. So I even have a video on octaves where I just have a ton of octave exercises. And it's, some of that comes from there. Um, but not, I don't think I did intervals in that one. So intervals is very important. Good brain exercise as well. Number five, one louder note in the chords. Uh, this blends a bit with the glistening arpeggios. Let's do a C6 chord. Let's maybe I'll, you can press the pedal or not. Maybe I, maybe I will on this. So I'm just doing just two octaves of that kind of glistening thing. But this is going to be interesting. It's quite difficult to do, but not if you concentrate. First of all, we're going to play the C louder, then the E louder, the G louder, and the A louder, the notes of the chord. But it's like this. So on the way up, you're going to play the note, not on the way down. So it's going to go like. See how the note stands out? So you, that's quite. And then you do it back down again. That's a very, very good dynamic exercise. Um, so when you do it quickly, uh, it's going to be, let me just get the feeling. So let's do it now. Isn't that nice? And you can even do it over two arpeggios if you want to take it even further. Let's do a whole diminished chord again, because I like those. So we'll do C, E, G flat and A. how that one note stands out that's quite an advanced thing to be able to do so that's number five number six chord chromatic fourth this is a nice little thing to do both hands again you're going to choose a chord type you're going to run up chromatically a fourth i mean you can run up chromatically a fifth if you want but i like to go i always encourage you to go up in fourths because that's where most chord progressions move in fourths and then you're going to play the same chord type in that key and then chromatically run up to the fourth and play the next same chord in that key uh, you might have to move around a bit, otherwise you get a bit too high. So it's okay if you maybe get to like E flat and you sort of want to run up to A flat, you might come down here and play the chord. You don't have to play the chord up here. But move around. Um, so let's take a major 7 chord type, starting on C. There's no... maybe you might run up chromatically from G. So... What I also do in my left hand when I arrive on the note, I go down an octave and then play the chord. And you're, you're just going to run up an octave or two, but play the chord together this time. So let's just start on C, I'll do it slowly. Up to F. Play it bass, and then play the chord. I mean, you can do it open or, or together. Let's do it together this time, because we already did open. Chromatically up to B flat, bass. Chromatically up to E flat, bass. A flat up to D flat, G flat, B, E, A, B, G. See, that's the idea. That's quite a nice one. And the chord, chromatic fourth. Um, so there's a nice one. I like that one. Number seven is five fingers on one note. I posted this as a YouTube short uh, last year, about a year ago, and um, maybe a bit less than that, eight months, and people seem to like it. It's quite hard to do. You have to do it at the same time. This is probably one of the best ones of the whole video, to be honest. Um, you, you could do it an octave apart. You can start on any note that you want, because you're going to go over all the chromatic notes anyway. And the idea is that you're going to play one note, both hands, five fingers on that note. At thumb, index, middle, ring, little. And then come back again. Ring, middle, index, thumb. Sorry for the noise on the... And you're going to do that as quickly as you can. 
eventually, and it's there's just a really nice feeling of flowing in the wrists. Really, really nice thing to do. The fingers just kind of fall in. You notice? If you look at the left hand, they just kind of well, bo both hands, of course, but the fingers just fall in. It's nice, but you have to do that chromatically. So something like this. You have to hear it five times. And finish on the same note that you started on. That's a really fun one to do. Good luck with that. Number eight, the butterfly. I like this one a lot. Again, it's a fantastic finger independence one. Very, very good for virtuosity. Uh, you choose a symmetrical point on the piano. It can literally be anywhere. So what I mean by that is that when you play those two notes, going out is symmetrical like a butterfly. So you can take G and A, for example. And then if you go chromatically down, you're playing the same notes. You see, it's, it's, it's a symmetrical pattern. Another one would be from F and B. It's a symmetrical pattern as well. You hit the same black and white note at the same time. Well, not the same ones musically, but you hit a white or black note sort of at the same moment when you move chromatically. So that you can use those ones. You could also use, of course, E and C. You might do F and B. They're quite far apart, but they follow the same pattern as well. I'm going to go from uh, G and A because it's just in front of me where I'm sitting right now. Normally I sit in front of a D, but the camera pole is here. So G and A I'll do. So you put your thumbs on there. This is a great one. And you're going to you're going to chromatically using natural fingers as they come naturally, go out to your natural stretch. Mine is a B, which is a comfortable stretch. I can reach further, but a B is natural. So you might call that a ninth. A to B or F to G is a 9. And you're going to chromatically play up and down. But there's two parts to this. You're going to play it normally as quickly as you possibly can, and then you're going to emphasize certain beats. And you can, you can also add dynamics as well. I have a video on dynamics, which um, didn't get such a good um, promotion when it was published. So there's a card and a link below to that. You should add dynamics to even all of these technical exercises. So again, it's, this is about rapidity. So start slowly. Don't even worry about what fingers are playing the notes, just do it naturally. So for me, look, I start on index, and then my middle wants to play the C. Now my ring wants to play the uh, B and F. Now my little fingers want to play the G and A and the last notes. Now my ring finger wants to play the black. Ring, 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 middle, 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 index, index, index. I'm not thinking about that. That's just what's happening naturally. So that is a nice, and it'll be different every time, but that's the point. You want to just do this chromatically as quickly as you can with your eyes closed. A fun one. So, uh, of course, I said you can highlight the beats, but just another thing while you're doing this before we get to the beats is that you can just do little patterns of this. So, you might just kind of go out to the D only. Or you might go out to the B and F. But you, you might just do the B and the D, for example. So, let's get all the combinations. And just stop randomly and come back randomly and go out and come in. Just sort of like a lung, almost. That's the idea. As quick as you can. That's really, really great. Now I'm starting to feel a tingle in my fingers. How long is this? 25 minutes. So well, maybe 22 minutes of playing. So I'm starting to feel a tingling already which is good. Not an aching yet, just a tingling. Uh, so that's a really, really uh, good. Oh, and then the emphasizing of a beat. So let's just count to five, for example. It's not about musical beats, it's just a pulse. Every time you play like, so you start here, and you go one, two, three, four, five. You'll play that note harder than the rest. So you don't count the first two, because that's like, and one, it's like that. So one, two, three, four, five, four, five, two, three, 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 four, five. And it's on a different note every time. So you can't possibly work out what the pattern is. You just have to play the five louder. One, two, three, four, five. Five, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. 
etc. Let's do three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do that with any number, even if it's eight. See, it's always going to be a different place. Really good brain exercise, fantastic for the fingers. That's just wonderful. Oh, my fingers are so alive, it's wonderful. So that's really, really great. Number nine, if you've made it this far, congratulations. Um, choose your favorite ones. You don't have to do all of these. Black notes in contrary motion. I love this. It's chromatic and legato, and it's brilliant. It's too easy on the white notes because the spacing is always the same. But on the black notes, what you do is you take any two black notes and put your thumbs on them, any pair, because you're going to do all the pairs anyway. And there's only, you know, there's only five positions anyway. So let's just start on um, the F sharp and A flat. Now you're going to first of all just naturally just find the, all the black notes. Black notes are a bit thinner than white notes, of course. So this is really, really good for your black note precision. So you're going to just very slowly go outwards, contrary motion, slowly staccato which means you have to lift your fingers off the notes otherwise you can't lay them on there because that's cheating you know you have to lift them off for the precision and just get used to at a slow speed it's, it's kind of one of my favorite ones really it, it even sounds very pretty you know what you might ask why it sounds pretty i have no idea all the intervals just seem to work and it's nice um you might say that it's because it's the key of F sharp and it's one, two, three, five, and six, which are very safe notes, and you're basically playing in versions of that. So it's, it's kind of always going to sound nice. And you're, so this is a great exercise because you're getting different positions as you have to jump over the white notes. So, staccato, do it as quickly as you can once you've got your fingers in. Staccato, fast but staccato. And then you're going to do it legato, slowly. Slowly staccato, uh, legato. And speed up until you can just do it very, very quickly. This is legato, it's not staccato. But my fingers are still not with attention. Then you move to the next pair. It's going to be completely different. Staccato. Let my fingers find the places. Close your eyes, it helps. And uh, then you'll do that as quick as you can. And then legato slowly. try and get fast but still that you can hear each individual note and then you'll go to the next one and you'll do it all again next pair next pair and you're back to the beginning again Really, really great one there. Now the last one, number 10, if you're still with me, D flat in triplets, but both hands uh, synchronized. So D flat, why D flat? Because it gives you all the black notes. Why not B? Because I don't like sharp keys. I like D flat. It's a kind of honey silk key for me. I like the key of D flat. This is very gentle. It just looks, it looks soft on the piano for me. Nice key, I like D flat. So uh, this one is a really good uh, workout, very, very good for virtuosity. You're going to play the leftmost three fingers together, then the middle three, and then the rightmost, I did that right, yeah, rightmost three fingers together in triplets over D flat. So you can do this in any key, of course, but the D flat is just nice because it gives you some nice combinations of notes. Some close together, some far away some equally equally spaced like that so first of all feel to get well not natural fingering but just get a natural feel for what it is and you might want to do it maybe four times repeated you don't have to do it super fast but just we well do that's the point but i mean not in the beginning so that's quite nice next one 
lost my count there. At least I hear the piano, I can't hear it very well. Middle ones. Next one. Finish with a nice little chord. Middle three. Feel it. Most three fingers. Oh, middle ones there. It just gives you a nice sort of, um, you know, variation of what notes to play. So that's quite a nice one to end with, and you can do that in any key, of course. You can add dynamics to that. You can add rhythm to that. It's your choice. Uh, so there you go. And number 11, of course, is to relax because you've just watched half an hour video, maybe, and uh, hopefully have taken uh, your favourites. Um, I do like all of them, to be honest. Um, I like the glistening arpeggio. Um, I like the uh, chromatic fourth. I like the five fingers on one note. I love the butterfly one. I like the black note one. Um, I, I guess they're kind of my favourite ones. Uh, but maybe you'll you'll find your own and choose your own. Maybe share your progress uh, in the comment section below. And um, again, you want to aim for rapidity in these. It's not just doing it. Uh, it's not just being able to do it. It's about doing it as quickly as you can. Find your natural limit with a me with a metronome. Be sure to do your exercises. My my fingers are really on fire now. They're really really loose, as you might have seen, and uh, they feel really flexible. It's really really great feeling. Don't expect to do this just straight off. Even I had to warm up for this video. Um, so there you go. Uh, good luck, as always. Likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Wallspeenism Syllabus, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.